Hi guys, it's Daniel. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm gonna show you uh, this uh, door. Uh, this is an actual door that you can find in Paris, made by the architect Jules Laviotte. I'm gonna show you right now uh, a photograph of the real one. So this is a marmoset render. This time again with displacements. Okay, and uh, just gonna leave out the transparency and show it on the cube. Kind of interesting too. Too much, uh, too much scaling. Gonna reduce it. Okay. So this is obviously my most uh, complex project to date. It was very tricky to do, and sadly this is not a 4K render. I only have 2K maps because I don't have enough uh, memory on my computer. In order to render this in 4K, I think I would need at least 64 gigabytes of RAM which is not the case, I only have 32. Okay, so uh, now I'm gonna show you the maps. Okay, the hey-ho, the base color, the height map, metallic, the normal map, uh, this is a base, uh, this is the first normal map, and this is the details uh, normal, uh, which I use for um, Texturing, you know, to I use it to render uh, the stones, some wood fibers, uh, only details, almost only details. This is the opacity and the roughness map. Oh, I'm just noticing a small issue uh, on the top. Let me show you the result, but it will be an easy fix. This video is not really about texturing, it's more about um, how I did this, how I built uh, all the shapes and um, putting it all together. What I like about this project is that I had the opportunity to make um, many layers of details. As you can see, um, for the window, just the controls of the windows, you get a lot of stuff to make. It was a really, really interesting project. Very painful, very challenging, but something uh, really cool to make. As you can see, um, I'm at uh, 97, 97% of my memory capacity. So it's kind of tough. This is a details normal. Let's see uh, the height map taking effect. It's a bit better with displacement. So this is the texturing graph. We're, go we're not going to talk about it uh, today. If you guys are interested, I can uh, always uh, uh, make a dedicated video about it. But today we're just going to talk about the main graph and how I, how I came up with uh, the most uh, complex uh, curves and shapes in this project. Okay, so let's go to the main graph. So this is the first time that um, I did everything in the main graph. There are no subgraphs in this project, which is usually not how I like to work. But I don't know why. <laughs> For this one, I said, I thought, okay, can I put everything into one graph only? Obviously, it's not going to be easy to um, to study. And should I uh, share the the graph, the project in Substance uh, Share? Uh, of course, I will organize this and uh, make many, many subgraphs in order to um, to have a better uh, readability and uh, to study it more uh, easily. Of course, of 
course. I relied heavily on the curve drawing system by Ilya Kuzmichev. Each time you see a, a green node, it's, a, it's his job. And you can do a lot of things with it. You see? Up. You have points that you can uh, manipulate. So it's a visual process. So it's easy. It's really easy. Of course, you have to make some settings. You have to find uh, the, the values, the correct values. Uh, you, you have to do some, some guessing. Some, you have to try a lot of things. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, without Ilya's system, I just couldn't have done this project. Would have been way, way, way too painful and too slow. So if you want, I could make a video tutorial about the curve drawing system. I think it's uh, something I can do. Yeah, because you know, it's um, only after a project like that that you can uh, really understand it. So uh, I guess I could share with you uh, how it works. But we're gonna study the graph, study what I've done, and you'll have a good idea of how it works and what you can do with it. Because it can do a lot of things, I really love it. It's uh, pretty user-friendly and you can do uh, almost every ornament that you need. So maybe I can talk about this central part made of wood. I could talk about the arch, the hawk here. I could talk about uh, the stones uh, sculpture here. I could talk about the ornaments, about the metal work. There's so much to talk about. Let's just, uh, you know what, I'm just gonna show you a bit of the graph. Uh, what could be interesting? But yeah, the hawk here. I think it's pretty easy to, to understand and it's a good way to uh, introduce this project. So I just uh, started with um, a curve node. I used the cropping area to get rid of uh, what I didn't need with this one. Just blended the two together. So I have the basis for the hack, then the footing, the footer. I don't know if it's uh, the correct word, just a mirror. This was pretty easy to do. Okay. Okay, the windows, let's talk about them. So we have three, three shapes. So let's see uh, how we did them. Well, I used uh, the curve drawing system. So I used the gra gradient input driver, which is fed by a curve. It gave him a shape. So in this case, it's a simple square. And it, uh, it draws, it simply draws the curve with the, the square, the curve that you drew here, that I drew here. Then you just have to transform it and place it where you need it to be. So here at the bottom. For the other shapes, I used simply a cubic Bezier input driver, which I can um, easily manipulate with the dots. Like this. Then with a transform node, I put it at the correct size and exactly where I need it to be. So then I have this, which is interesting, but uh, it's not the complete window, it's just a control, so I need the, the window, I need this. So the control, I just inverted it. 
it's a bit of um, like we say in French bricolage <laughs> and I used an SVG node to draw the shapes that needed to be subtracted from this thing here but uh, I think in retrospect we can probably do it uh, another way just draw a rectangle and then you just have to erase subtract the shapes with uh, just uh, you know bigger curves here 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 and on the right and I think it should work I'd like to show you how I made the central wood pillar because uh, it was one of the most difficult things to do in this project I think so I drew the main contour with uh, the curve drawing system once again I used the cubic bezier input and blended several together to have the contour like this then just a mirror and I have the pretty good basis for what I need then I needed some gradients to begin uh, making the, the peaks and the valleys and then stacking together some discs and you know for the discs it's just a, a circle with a gradient linear applied to it thanks to a blend node setting to a multiply blending mode and another stacking here and here then you just combine everything together and you have your pillar easier said than done obviously <laughs> It's uh, pretty tricky to do and it can take some time. It took me some time to figure it out. But uh, yeah, once you understand the main principle, once you got it, it's just a matter of time before you finish it. Uh, this piece here was also very difficult to make. So let's have a look at it. So you see it's here. So it's a combination of everything that you see here. I think this is something different. Yes. So let's begin by uh, the top. So every time it's the same, it's the same principle. I just change, uh, you know the width and the size of the curves the tricky part here is to blend um, the shapes uh, seamlessly, seamlessly together or at least as much as possible like you can see here I try to you know make it almost as it the same piece but it's just two separate elements
in order to really understand um, how this works you really need to to study the curve during system this is very central to uh, the making of this project you know some gradients to make some uh, relief some holes here And here we have our final piece. Uh, I think this was the trickiest, um, trickiest thing to do in this project with the central pillar. And maybe um, with the metal ornaments, they were also uh, quite difficult to, to make. So let's, uh, let's uh, see how I did them. But you know, it's always the same thing. You come up, you start with uh, something simple. It's only combination of curves. You add detail after detail. As you can see, A contour and we have our uh, element. We could also have a look at um, some small details, some wood carving details that we can see here, a bit here. Even though it's once again the same logic, same thing. You see, it's just a combination of different curves. It's a pretty simple one with different uh, levels, different depth. And it's just a subtract. And I would like also to show you how I made uh, these ones here, those big blocks of stones, especially this one. Okay, let's find them. So first you begin with a, a curved node, which, gonna, which is gonna give you all the details that you need. So you have a, like a straight column with exactly the shape that you want. Then, as we can see, it kind of uh, it kind of has a smaller shape at the end, at the tip. It's subtle, but I think you need it. So you need something like that. Uh, for this, I use the perspective warp node. 
which is not something uh, that comes from that comes with uh, Substance Designer by default. So I had to take it in uh, to download it from Substance uh, Share, I think. It is made by Cory McMacG. Then I just combined the two shapes, and I had this. I can't. I really can't show you everything in this project. It's way too much, way too complex. But I think I just showed you um, the most uh, important parts in a simple way. I know, but uh, it's a, it's an approach to this. And uh, if you want to know more, you know, can always make another project in this uh, in the same way, and perhaps this time record the whole process. Because sometimes I record everything and then I uh, speed up the process and uh, you can watch uh, almost everything. Sometimes I don't record and uh, I have to go through the graph with you, showing you uh, some of the nodes, some of the steps. Personally, what I like best when I study something is just to, to download the graph and really study it myself. I think it's the best way to learn. Uh, but I also like to uh, listen to uh, the author, author of the of the graph. So just let me know in the comment section what you like to see, what you like to watch. Uh, even though I know that uh, it won't be the same for everybody, but at least I can uh, maybe uh, do something different for you. Just let me know, please. And uh, I will come back with uh, new stuff and new cool projects for you and for the community. Okay, thank you very much for watching and listening and bye-bye.